Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning's message is, as our principal Julie Bourgeois mentioned just a few moments ago, taken from today's Old Testament lesson from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verses 1 and 2. This time I'm going to read it from the NIV translation, so just a, a little different twist where it reads. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in, in, in distress. In the past he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephtali, but in the future you will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. And the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. This is our text. Please be seated. In the name of Christ Jesus, to your family and friends in Christ, amen. I want to start uh, with a little quiz here this morning. Test your knowledge. See if you're able to figure this out or not. But don't panic, it's not that big of a deal. But my question is this. Uh, if I were to ask you what the northernmost point in North America was, do you know what that would be? And then also, to follow up, do you know what that point would be most famous for? So think about it, the most northern point in North America and what they're known for. So go ahead, you can whisper that to the person next to you so you can see if that you got it right or not. Well, the, the answer is... Barrow, Alaska. Uh, some of you may or may not have known that, and this was confirmed by an uh, uh, individual at the first service. Said, "Yeah, Pastor, we had we had been there, and, and there was ice on the rails back on August 2nd already with the the coldness that was there." But Barrow, Alaska, is known as one of the darkest places during the winter time. And after a little research, I found out that uh, in Barrow, the sun set on November 19th, 2019. And the first ray of sunshine peeking over the horizon just showed up uh, just a couple days ago on January 23rd of this year. Can you imagine that? A little over two months of total darkness. I tell you, living through two months of darkness is not easy. Personally, I would not want any part uh, of a place like that. Uh, and, and what makes matters even worse is that the some 4,000 hunters and whalers and lawyers and public employees who live there, Barrow, Alaska, is also known as one of having one of the highest suicide rates in the state of Alaska. I think it's safe to say that the darkness has most definitely taken a, to taken a toll on the people who live there. But I'll tell you this, even though this darkness has taken such a terrible toll on many of the people who live in Barrow, Alaska, these same individuals, as you could well imagine, more so than many others, can truly appreciate and greatly value the importance of light. You see, what they do and did back on January 23rd when the, the ray of sunlight just shone above, beyond in the horizon, what they did, it's kind of pretty cool really, they all took out to the ice at that time so that they then could fly these brightly colored kites in joyous celebration that the darkness is now finally over and that the light has finally arrived. See, they truly appreciate the arrival of light. And so with all that being said, it doesn't really take all that much of a stretch to suggest that that's a pretty good description of what the season of Epiphany is all about. You see, this season of Epiphany, uh, of which we are in the middle of right now, uh, it's a season of light. It's a season uh, that really deserves a great deal of celebration on our part as followers of Christ and, and, and as Christians. The season of Epiphany has been set aside for us uh, to remember the light of that star that shone that ultimately led uh, the Magi to the Christ child, who is ultimately the true light of the world. And it is this light that is oh so important to all of our lives uh, because it is this light that brings us real life. And it is uh, this kind of same thing that Isaiah is talking about in today's Old Testament lesson. You see, 
He was saying that at that particular time, this all-important light was missing in the lives of the people who lived there at that point in time. And that because they were in this land of darkness, there were all kinds of problems going on with the people at that time, and, and, and it was causing all kinds of problems in, in their lives. And, and as we take a closer look at, at the events leading up to today's text, I guess we could say the, looking at the greater context of, of what is going on at that time, we see that the people living in that darkness, that, that they were pretty much disobeying God's desires for their lives at that time. And what made matters worse was that King Ahaz, who was the ruler at that time, he was also uh, causing all kinds of problems with the people as, as well. He was, instead of leading the people to the Lord, Ahaz was also leading the people away from the Lord. And so uh, because of this, the people were living in that constant state of confusion because they weren't exactly sure what it was that they were, were, were to be doing. Because even the leaders weren't doing the things that they should be doing. So they didn't know which way they should turn. As we think about that, could we not also say that it's sad to admit that as we take a closer look at this world in which we live, that that there are many people out there who are walking in this self-same sort of darkness in our world today. I guess you could almost say it doesn't really take all that much investigation on our part to see that that is indeed true. If there's any doubt whatsoever, just pause for a moment. Let's look at some of the darkness that we have seen, some of the darkness that we have experienced over this past year. Looking back over this past year, we see the darkness that, that, that was caused by, by all sorts of mass shootings that, that took place across the country of ours. We see the darkness that existed by those different terrorist attacks that took place uh, around the world. We see the darkness that was taken as innocent lives uh, have been taken and as hurricanes and earthquakes and forest fires are raging around the world. We've seen the darkness that has taken place with all that political bickering that is taking place, uh, probably worse than any other time in the history of our nation, which ultimately now has led to the impeachment of the third president in our United States history. It's safe to say that we have seen a ton of darkness in this world of ours. Haven't we? But I'll tell you this. It's one thing to, to look out there and to see all of this darkness that is in someone else and say how terrible it is that they're living in this darkness. We could shake our heads at them and shake our fingers at them as well saying it's bad with all the things that they have done. But I tell you, it's another thing to look at the darkness in which we are living because far too often we all live in that self-same darkness as well, don't we? Uh, as much as we hate to admit it, as much as we hate to even really think about it, we are all in that same darkness, aren't we? Well, it's true, maybe we're not quite as guilty as some of these other people, maybe we haven't gone to quite the same extreme as some of these other people have, but still, we oftentimes are not doing those things that, that God really wants us to be doing. After all, how often in life do we find that we, we are kind of lacking in, in showing that love that is necessary in very uh, touchy situations that exist? Or many times when we look back, don't we see that we have failed to reach out to, to help someone who is in need or, or maybe taken things that aren't ours or said things that we shouldn't have said or didn't say things that we should have said? It's true that if we take a microscopic look at all of our lives and I think it's safe to say we really don't even need a microscope to take a closer look at our lives to find that we are not quite as perfect as we'd like to think that we are. That we too are indeed guilty of living in this sin-darkened world and thus in the process fall short of doing what it is that God really wants us to be doing. And the thing is, as, as this reality kind of hits us head on and, and starts to maybe make us feel maybe just a little bit guilty over the things that we have done and those things that we have failed to do, those things that we should have done, uh, we need to remember that that's only half of the story. That's the worst half. For you see, in today's text, we see that Isaiah is ultimately bringing a message of hope, a message of light instead of darkness, a message of life instead of death, a message of joy instead of gloom. 
Do you remember what he said? He said, nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress, the people who have walking in darkness, that they have seen a great light. And these are words that are there that are to bring comfort to you and to me as well. You see, some 2,000 years ago, at just the right time, the perfect time, that is when God sent his son Jesus down here into the darkness of our world so that he then could bring us that desperately needed light. And when he came, he opened your eyes so that you could see that light that he was bringing. See, that's what Jesus did for us. See, he came to rescue us from the darkness of our sin, and, and in so doing, he then entered this darkness himself. Think about it. He entered the darkness of his mother's womb. He entered the darkness of the manger bed. He entered the darkness uh, in the midnight escape to Egypt, but, but I'll tell you this, it, there was more. There was much more than just that. Eventually, he submitted himself to the darkness of hell itself when he cried out from the cross in agony and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And finally, he experienced the darkness of the tomb where his lifeless body was placed. You see, the light of God had been snuffed out. It had been smothered in darkness. However, this is a pretty big however, that darkness could not uh, triumph whatsoever. On the third morning, the blazing light broke forth from that tomb. The angel witnesses who, who shone like, like the brightness of the stars and sun itself uh, proclaimed, he is not here, he is risen, just as he said that he would be. You see, through his death and, and, and victory over death, Christ has conquered death and darkness, and he brought light and life into each of our lives, and he did this so that you and I could be delivered from the darkness and brought into the glorious light of his love what amazing comfort that brings us maybe think about the story that I came across it was a it's an old story it happened a long time ago when this well-known greatly loved preacher by the name of Helford Lucock you can tell it's old uh, when was the last time you heard someone called Helford right but uh, as he was telling this story, he shared that uh, as he was approaching Christmas, Helford Lucock asked his granddaughters what it was that they wanted for Christmas. And the girl said, well, well we, want, we want a world. Lucock was wondering, what in the world was it talking about? What? And then all of a sudden, pardon the pun, the light went on, and he realized what they wanted was a globe. So he was kind of excited about that. And so he went out looking to different stores, and he finally found this globe that he thought was going to be an amazing gift. And so he went and he bought it. And, he was, and once he bought it, it was kind of like a kid in a candy store where he was so excited. He couldn't wait till Christmas so that he could see the faces light up of the kids when they opened this, this gift to exactly what they wanted. Well, Christmas finally arrived, and they ripped that present open, and, and Lukak realized that for some reason, by the look on their face, that, that they weren't happy at all. There was a great deal of disappointment. So I asked, well, well what's wrong? Didn't you say that, that this is exactly what you wanted? And one of the girls spoke up and said, yeah, well, yeah, uh, it is, but we really wanted, we wanted a lighted world. A lighted world? And then it hit them again. What they wanted was a globe with a light inside. He said, that's not a problem. We can take care of that. So they took the globe, took it back to the store. Unfortunately, that particular store that he, he bought the, the globe in did not have a lighted one. So he returned it, got the money, went shopping around until he finally found a lighted globe. He gave it to them, and they were all excited once they had that globe that had a light in it. Well, as he was retelling this story to a fellow pastor, his pastor friend then said, well, uh, did you learn anything by this experience? He said, yeah, I, I, I learned that, that a lighted globe is a lot more expensive than a dark one. Uh, it costs more. And you know, it's true, isn't it? That a lighted world does indeed cost more? It costs God his son. It costs Jesus his life. The thing is, if, if we're going to take this seriously about letting our light shine into this world in which we live, I'll tell you this, it's going to cost us too. But no matter what the price, I'll tell you, it's not too great because we know 
what's going to be accomplished by that. I'll tell you this. Great things can and will indeed happen here in this place. But I'll tell you this. It's not going to be without cost, and it's not going to be without sacrifice by all of us. But the good news behind that is that the Lord, he's going to give us the strength. He's going to give us the courage. He's going to give us the ability so that we are going to be able to get the job done in his kingdom here on earth. I'm thinking about that. All we can say is, how awesome is that? In Jesus' name, amen. And now, may the peace of God, which far surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith for life everlasting. Amen. We continue.